Okay, so now we're going to see how you can weaponize the order condition and the root condition to derive uh, multi-step methods. All right, uh, and so um, so let's make the following observation that one of the conditions uh, for consistency, which means that uh, the method has at least um, order one, is that the sum of uh, the AMs uh, vanish. Okay. Um, but it's also easy to observe that this is, of course, nothing more than the characteristic polynomial rho uh, evaluated at w is equal to 1. Uh, so this is implying that uh, for consistency, uh, 1 has to be a root of uh, rho of w. Uh, and if you think about it, uh, this is perfectly uh, compatible with uh, what you might expect, because if you have a vector field which vanishes, you have a constant solution. And in order for the constant solution to be expressible by your linear constant coefficient difference equation, um, then uh, one has to be, it's like uh, in uh, as a root, because it's like that would correspond again to this constant vector solution. Okay, so again, consistency implies that one has to be a root of the characteristic polynomial. Okay, and then the other thing, of course, it's like we had was um, the order condition, more generally speaking. Um, and um, so you have rho of w minus uh, sigma of w natural log of w is uh, something which is some constant w minus 1 to the p plus first power plus something which is big O of w minus 1 to the p plus second power. Okay, so this is the order condition. Um, and, and so what you want to do then is you would like to imagine that if you were to choose a rho um, uh, using the criterion that it satisfies the root condition, you might ask then if you know what rho is and you want, uh, you know what order of accuracy you would like to expand things out to, whether or not you can then make an expression for sigma in terms of everything else. Okay, and, and so that's uh, fairly easy to do. You take this uh, equation for the order and you then solve for sigma. And so you write down that sigma of w, right, is equal to um, basically um, rho of w um, divided by the natural log of w, right, plus something which is big O of w minus 1. Uh, to the p plus first power, okay, uh, and then you divide this again by the natural log of w, okay. Um, so, so what happens is that there's of course a singularity. It's like uh, in the denominator, it's like when w is equal to one, okay. Um, but it's a removable singularity. Uh, and if you were to take uh, an expansion for the natural log of w, it's like in powers of w minus 1, then you'll see that uh, the leading term is a, a w minus 1 term. So that will cancel out. It's like uh, one of the w minus 1 factors in the uh, numerator. So you end up with something which more or less looks like rho of w divided by the natural log of w plus something which is big O of uh, w minus 1 to the p power. Okay, so, so in any case, it's like that's telling you that if you do this expansion up to error terms, uh, which are um, of sort of power p um, in w minus 1, then you get uh, a method, um, you know, it's like described in terms of your choice of rho and sigma. So let's try to, to illustrate this idea. Okay, so let's choose... Uh, S is equal to two, uh, and um, and I'm going to choose it's like a row of W uh, which is compatible with the root condition, and so again it's like it has to be that one is, is one of the roots, okay? So uh, so I, I put a omega minus one term here, um, and then because there are two terms, um, you need that this is at least a quadratic polynomial. Uh, so I could imagine having a root at zero. So let's just look at something like this: w minus one multiplied into w, which is uh, w squared minus w. Okay. All right. So so now I want to evaluate uh, rho of w over the natural log of w. Uh, and then this expansion is uh, in powers of w minus 1. 
So it makes life easier to introduce a variable to C, which is um, W minus one. Okay, so this is uh, that W is equal to one plus to C. So let's do an expansion that way. So this is equal to um, one plus to C squared minus one plus to C divided by the natural log of one plus to C. Um, all right, and so this is equal to um, c squared plus c divided by c minus uh, one half c squared plus one third c cubed. Uh, and then I can choose how uh, far I want to go in the expansion. So let's say I just truncate this, it's like uh, to the c cubed term and then have an error term of big O of c to the four. Okay, uh, and then there's a, there's a factor of c which is common, it's like both these terms I can delete, I can cancel those out. So I got one plus C over one uh, minus one half C plus one third C squared plus big O of C cubed. Okay, so how do I deal with this now? So this denominator looks uh, something like one over one minus X. Okay, uh, and so you probably know that this has a series expansion, which looks like one plus x plus x squared, and so on. So, uh, and then x here is of course uh, this term here. So x is one half c minus one third c squared. Okay, so let's look at what one over one plus x looks like with this kind of series expansion. So that's one plus one half c minus one third c squared, right? Plus uh, one half c minus one third c squared squared, plus something which is uh, some higher order term. Um, so it has to be at least order c cubed, basically. Okay, so, um, so let's see what happens. All right, so that's one plus one half c minus one third c squared, All right? And then the only term which is uh, smaller than c cubed is uh, this uh, um, one half c, the whole thing squared. So that's plus one quarter uh, c squared. Okay, so this is one plus one half c. Um, let's see, minus plus minus one twelfth. Uh, C squared plus big O of C cubed, right? All right. Okay. So so that's that's what you have. Okay. So this looks like um, one plus C. All right. One plus one half C minus one twelve C squared plus big O of C cubed. Okay, uh, and then you can expand that further, uh, and you get, uh, let's see, one plus three over two to C plus five over 12 to C squared plus big O of C cubed. Okay, um, so, um, so you can see what happens if you have, um, see if, if, if you, you take it up to uh, this order um, in order to see cube this gives me a quadratic uh, or sorry this gives me a method which is uh, sort of um, cubic right so it has order p equals to three okay um, and um, okay so so let's see what happens when you do that So I am writing rho of w over the natural log of w, right, as equal to one plus three over two to c plus five twelve to c squared plus big O of to c cubed. Okay. So, 
So this is in terms of C, right? Um, which is um, W minus one. So I have to rewrite this uh, back in terms of this is sigma of W. I have to rewrite uh, this in terms of sigma. So sigma of W is equal to uh, one plus three over two uh, W minus one plus five twelfths uh, W minus one squared plus something big O of C cubed. All right. Uh, just maybe rewrite this as uh, you know W minus one cubed. All right. Uh, and so anyway, so you expand this, um, and what you end up getting is uh, minus one twelfth. Right, plus three over two cos c. Sorry, no, minus one twelve plus um, two over three w plus five uh, twelve w squared. Okay, uh, so you know sigma, you know uh, it's like you know rho, rho of w is w squared minus w. Uh, so given these two things, it's like you can derive your method. Right, so this is y n plus two minus y n plus one is equal to h times uh, f evaluated. Well, let's say um, five over twelve f evaluated at y n plus two t n plus two, right? Plus two thirds um, f evaluated at y n plus one t n plus one, right? Minus one twelve. Uh, f evaluated at y n uh, t n. Okay, so this is an example of a uh, Adams Moulton method. Um, with um, two stages, sorry, um, two steps. Okay, uh, and it's uh, clearly implicit. So you might ask, well, what happens if I wanted a adams bashford method, which was explicit? Okay, so what you could do, of course, is that you go back, it's like to this uh, sigma, it's like of w uh, expressed in terms of rho of w but in, divided by natural log of w. But instead of taking this expansion up to error terms, which are big O of uh, cos c squared, you uh, take the expansion only up to big O of uh, cos c um, you sort of ignored this this term here. It's like and you only look at the expansion uh, with an error term, which is big O of cos c squared. Okay, so uh, so if you want an Adams uh, Bashford method, all right, uh, then s is equal to p is equal to two. Okay. Uh, and so I need to look at sigma of w uh, as one plus three over two cos c plus something which is big O of cos c squared. All right. Okay. So so as before, I substitute uh, cos c is equal to w minus one. So this is one plus three over two w minus one. Okay. So I get three over two w. Uh, and then minus one half, right? <clears throat> so, if uh, with that in mind, um, then what you end up getting uh, is the uh, a method which is now only second order accurate, uh, and it looks like uh, y n plus two minus y n plus one is equal to h uh, multiplied into f evaluated. Well, let me write that again. So that's uh, three over two f evaluated at y n plus one t n plus one minus one half uh, f evaluated at y n t n. Okay. So uh, so this is what you would need. It's like to get a characteristic polynomial sigma w, which looks like uh, three over two w minus one half. And of course, this is nothing more than the Adams. Uh, Bashford method um, with two steps. Okay, so this is the Adams Bashford two. Okay, and it is uh, second order accurate. And
and it is explicit, okay, which is sort of what you expect. So again, this is just to illustrate how you might uh, use um, both the order conditions and the root condition to construct um, you know, multi-step methods. So, uh, so you need to choose a um, characteristic columnar uh, row um, which has a root at one and which then also satisfies the root condition. And once you've chosen that, you do this expansion, uh, row of w divided by the natural log of w, um, in order to compute an expression for sigma, and you, you do this by expanding this out to the appropriate order uh, which you're interested in, okay? Um, and so that's exactly um, the method you end up getting. Uh, and I've illustrated how it's like by using uh, this expansion, you can either construct a method of third order, right, which is this Adams Moulton method, which is uh, implicit, but it has a uh, order three, or if you uh, took the expansion out, it's like to a smaller number of terms, uh, you get a method which is explicit, which is the Adams-Bashford two method, uh, but it's second order accurate. So let me just stop here.